Good day, lords and ladies, and welcome to Scarlet Hollow with me, Cornus Knight. Now, before we get back into our our adventure of this game, um, there's a quick um, forward um, notice for me. The next chap, the next chapter of this episode two comes out on the 11th of this month at time of recording. Um, so that is something to look forward to, and um, I just wanted to give a little bit of feedback from the the bit of I've played of this game so far. I think this game has a lot of, uh, of promise from what I've seen. I know I don't normally play a lot of visual no novels, um, which is surprising because I used to play a lot of adventure books back in the day, those old school sort of D&D adventure books or uh, do-it-yourself adventure books. Um, I really enjoyed those series. Um, one thing I will say from playing this um, is that I don't know, like, I, I almost wish there was like an insanity mechanic. I wish the developers had put an insanity mechanic in the system where, like, the more you notice stuff going on, the more it affects your your sanity. And um, it would have been cool if they had something like that. Maybe that could have been done, done into, tied into, like, the dialogue. So the less sanity you have, maybe the lower your sanity goes, maybe the occasional, like, rare um, dialogue option pops up, which is to do with the fact that you're slowly losing your mind or something like that would have been cool. Um, but that's just my view. I, I think this game has a lot of really good premise and I want to see see more of it going forward. So let's uh, dive right in, shall we? And we're back. It hasn't, it's, we've just left the, we um, the diner and we're on top of the hill. It hasn't been, it hasn't been very cold when you first arrived in town, but as the sun dips close and closer to the horizon, a chill descends upon the hollow and you see the situation with renewed clarity. You're in a new place, far off from civilization and the people you know, following someone who just met into a dark forest in search of monsters. You feel... Uh, more alive than you've, you've been in years. Um, you can feel more alive than you've been in years. Strangely calm, tense, unsettled. Let's say more alive than you... Um, let's go... Tense, because, like, come on, let's be honest. We're going off into the middle of the mountains to a place we don't know, someone we don't know, to hunt for monsters, so we're probably going to be tense. You feel tense and that something terrible could happen at any moment. Every snapping twig, rustling leaf makes your heart beat faster and your eyes go wider. Stella, by comparison, is jaunty. You wish you could have her confidence. Gotta love this brisk, brisk f uh, fall weather. This past summer was the hottest on records since last year, at least, says Stella. You know how it is these days. Each summer is the hottest yet until the next summer, which always finds a way to be so much worse. It's just nice to feel a chill in the air and see the leaves change like normalcy is restored, if only for a moment. Sorry if that's a bit of a bummer, she says. We should talk about something more fun, like, the, like skunk apes. Are you really expecting to find anything? You really expect to find anything out here? What are the chances of you actually running into a, sk a skunk ape in just one night of filming, you say? That's fair. We are hunting a creature that stayed hidden from humans long enough to gain a mythic reputation. What are the odds of something like that popping out of the star out to star on my little YouTube channel? But hey, the chances are never zero, right? Let's go with this one here. Do you hunt for other things that aren't cryptids, you know, like ghosts, demons, werewolves, that sort of thing? Yeah, for sure, I used to go after all sorts of spooky stuff. I never had much luck, though, especially when it came to ghosts. Back when I first started doing solo videos, I'd go into all sorts of old abandoned buildings, hoping to stumble across some sort of activity. But nothing ever happened, it was always just me and my camera in an old house getting worked up over a gust of wind or a creaking floorboard. When all's done and said and done, I've just been a lot luck luckier with cryptids. I wanted to believe in ghosts so bad, I can't rule out the possibility that they really are that there are really true horn things out there, but if there are, I'm sore as heck haven't seen any myself. Werewolves, I kind of, I kind of lump those in with cryptids, she says. I'd be shocked if they actually were people out there who had turned into animals, but the werewolf, werewolf lore lines up pretty well with the great beast G genre of cryptid. As for demons, I don't know, I honestly don't even want to consider the possibility of that if they exist, because if they really are out there, geez, a lot of folk are doomed to an eternity of flames. So that's all hope, it's just all bunk. Am I right? What about aliens, you say? What do you think about aliens? 
Don't even get me started. Did you see the UFO videos the government has classified? They actually, that's something they actually did do. Um, the US government declassified some videos not too long ago. Uh, and it was some pretty interesting stuff. Um, aliens are definitely real and they absolutely visited Earth. Like, I believe in aliens way more than I believe in cryptids. You don't see many haunting haunt me hunting aliens out there because we know they're real. Um, heck yeah, aliens are real. I'm skeptical. See, that's just what the government wants you to think. Let's see, yeah, that's just what the government wants you to think. Let's go with that one. See, that's just what the government wants you to think. It's easier for them to cover up their secret research programs if they trick everyone into thinking aliens behind the ducks and UFO sightings and all that weird stuff. So the government does mess up stuff, does mess up stuff all on the daily. But the way I see it, I have about as much control over them as I would over have extraterrestrial beings. So if I had no control of these things, I might as well choose to think it's been aliens all this time and let a little joy into my heart, you know. Besides, it's not like it matters which of us is right or either of us is right at all. I'll die one day, and so will you. And eventually, that will be there will be no one left who remi remembers us or what we did in our lifetimes. Um, damn, you disarmed me. You've disarmed me with your nihilism. Don't try to disarm me with your nihilism. Yes, go. Damn, you disarmed me with your nihilism. Damn, you disarmed me with your nihilism. And now I feel as a, I feel an empty pit in my soul as for the vastness of as at the for the vastness of time. Ah, don't worry. There's some comfort in her meaningless of our actions. Man, that was a weird statement. Um. Um. Has anything bad ever happened to you in these walk on these hikes? You say. So nothing bad ever happened on these hikes, you know, just curious. Hmm, let me think. There was the time back in early high school where Reese fell down a cliff. But he was fine. We had some folks from town break up a pulley and get him out of the ravine. And his leg only took a couple of months to heal. All in all, not too bad. For I guess there was also the time I was out then, kind of got stuck in a cave. I was getting great footage of what I thought was a family of wampus cats. But I wasn't able to wiggle my way back out. Turns out the Wampus Cats were actually skunks who were very much who very much did not appreciate me blocking the entrance to their hidey hole. And instead of running for help, Gretchen just sat outside, bored to tears. Lassie, she is not. It took about an hour to get loose, which was pretty intense. But a few tomato, but a few tomato juice baths later, I was right as rain, so it could have been a lot worse. You're lucky that you're not blind. I'm pretty sure that getting um. Basically, the the skunk squirts you with um, liquid from its I can't remember its gland. They have they have a they have a particular gland that they have that they squirt you with. I'm pretty sure the liquid can make you go blind that um, if it gets to your eyes, if I recall. Um, oh yeah, and there was a time I actually stumbled onto the Duke's property and nearly got my head shot off. But that happens every day. If it, that happens to everybody sooner or later. I'm pro I I I'd barely count count it. So yeah, these hikes aren't all that dangerous, all things considered. Are uh, you sure it's safe? You... I'm sorry, did you just say oh, you almost got shot? Are you sure it's safe here? You know, I'm a little surprised you're getting cold feet. I know we just met, but I had a peg you as pretty adventurous. I, I really wouldn't have worry about Duke though. He might be a little jumpy, but he means well. And these trails are ways off from his farm. And if it makes you feel any better, I've been out on these trails with him before. The man sounds like a truck crashing through the woods when he walks. We hear him long before we see him. And the wildlife isn't anything to be afraid of either. The worst I've seen up here is the occasional black bear, and even they, are, and if they scare easily. But hey, there's no point worrying about whatever bad stuff may happen to us. So sometimes worrying can help you prepare for something, but we're as prepared as, as can be. I even carry I even carry bear mace, and if you are prepared as you can be, why give it give in to your anxiety when you can have fun instead? It's not like being anx anxious ever stops anything bad from happening. In my experience, all it does is make the bad things worse. the The only thing you can do to tell you the only thing you can do is tell yourself this has happened. There's no going back to it before this bad thing happened, and then you walk on and make things better. And anyway, all this is to say, we're good, don't worry. Did you hear that? Someone comes stepping out of the darkness of a shotgun. Calm down, Gretchen, you old mutt. Same to you, Stella. You're always jumping at nothing, girl. 
Phew, sorry for, for being jumpy, Duke. I thought you were some creature of darkness. Nah, girly, just old Duke. Now, what the hell are you looking for out here? Skunk ape, she declares. Sorry I asked, sighs the man. And who's this you suck, suck her into coming with you? Wait a tick, you, are, you aren't. Is that? Yep. I see. Welcome to the hollow. My condolences. I keep you, I'll keep you in my prayers. Now both of you head back into town, you hear. It's best you steer well clear of this area tonight. I am up. I am out dealing with my own critter and won't be too appreciative if a couple of fools with camera scare away the most the more sensitive wildlife. What are you hunting tonight? Something tall and hairy? Something musky? You see anything like that recently? She declares. Wouldn't you like to know? You never could stay in it. You could never could stay in your business, Stella. Richmond, put the damn camera down. Ah, oh, come on, Duke. Maybe I could help out. I'm pretty good at tracking, you know. I learned from the best. That you did, but I have yet to see a shred of proof that you listened to any of it. The way you tromp around the woods at night yelling about Chukabungus or whatever, or what I have you. Something's been at my chickens. I've lost three this week and I can't afford to lose many more from that. I'm sorry to hear that, says Stella. But uh, I wonder if the skunk ape has a taste for chicken. Now see, this is why I don't come to you at these things. It ain't no skunk ape, whatever the hell that is. I know exactly what it is, but I know you won't believe me if I tell you. Stella, oh Duke, don't, you don't think it's... I do actually, it's those damned mountain lions that are out there, Stella. I don't care what your little investigation turned up, you haven't, been, you haven't been, been out in the woods as long as I have. Those sons of bitches are sneaky. Of course you won't find any of any in one night of tracking. And now I know for a fact that they've been getting at my chickens, it couldn't be anything else. I'm telling you, man, mountain lions are extinct in these parts. There hasn't been a sighting since the 1990s, and even th those were iffy. I can't believe you go out of there, go out there on your YouTube, YouTube, saying some river monster spotted by a couple school-aged boy scouts has, be, has been 100% confirmed. Yet, Appalachian cougars are some kind of far-fetched fantasy made up by geezers like me. You made me look like a fool. I read those comments people were posting on your video. They were calling me all kinds of names just for seeing things with my own eyes. Now I know to be, my own eyes that I know to be true. I'm sorry, Duke. I didn't mean to sick, it, sick anybody on you. I just didn't think it's plausible. You'll eat those words when they come carrying a mountain lion corpse out of the woods at dawn. And if the two don't want to face, and if the two of you don't want to face full of buck sort, I suggest you run home and stay out of the woods tonight. Um, let's see what we've got. Uh, powerful build, intimidate. Are you threatening us? Uh, but we're here first. What if you find a mountain lion? Don't kill it. Right on, Duke. Kill the mountain lion. Can't you uh, just buy more chickens? Okay, let's go. I mean, the thing is, um, saying stuff like, like "Can't you buy more chickens?" is no point because if you buy more chickens, um, the mountain lions would just eat them because that's what they do. They're they're predators. They're an apex predator. Um, what if you find a mountain lion, you just can't kill it? The thing is, this is one of the inter interesting things with nature and um, when when civilization and nature butt heads. If it is a mountain lion that's eating his chickens, and it keeps coming back to eat his chickens, and, it, and then it moves on to other bits of his livestock and his farm, eventually it will become desensitized to being around humans, and then it may decide that humans are really juicy things to eat anyway. You've got to also remember that mountain lions aren't naturally afraid of humans by and large. That you, like mountain lions, uh, I believe, actually have quite a high attack record on humans in America. So, um, yeah, I'm not going to argue with him because he's just trying to be, he's just trying to look after our welfare. So let's go. Okay, let's go. Let's go, Stella. He's one with the gun after all. You're right, no point in losing any more time in arguing. Fine, we'll head back to town. Break a leg out there, Duke. Break what now? I mean, good luck, old man. All right, have a nice night, you all. As you and Stella turn to the trail, as he carefully looks back the way you came. Okay, the coast is clear. There's no way we're letting Duke edge us out of that easily. Come on, I know a trail that will let us go around him. Yes, I knew you would give 
You wouldn't give up the hunt, lead the way. Oh no. We ain't actually heading back to town. Are you sure you don't want to, like, watch a movie instead? No way. Not with Duke and his shotgun out there when the blower heads off. No way. Not with Duke and his shotgun out there waiting to blow. Yeah, this is the thing, like... I, like, like... If I'm going to play my character called Jason, um... Like, this is probably the, like, he's going to be, like, sensible, because that's what sensible people do. Um, no way. Not with Duke and his shotgun out there waiting to blow our heads off. Nah, no way. Not with Duke, the Duke and his shotgun out there. I like my head intact, not blown to pieces, thank you very much. I uh, don't have to worry about old Duke. I've been out tracking with him before. The man sounds like a truck crossing through trees when he walks. Even if we do cross paths, he'll hear him long before we catch wind of us. There's no shaking you, is there? You sigh. Oh, fine. There's no seeking you, is there? Just follow me. You'll just follow me until I finally relent and go monster hunting with you. Still a joke. Laughs. I promise it'll be fun and safe. The trail's just up this way. Let's go. And this is how people end up getting attacked by vampires and werewolves and zombies and horror films because the person leading them goes, Nothing can go wrong. All right. This looks like a good shot. Mind holding the camera? She hands you a camera and takes position. As the camera ticks on to record. Hmm. As night falls, my new assistant, the mysterious Jason, and I find ourselves on a high hill in Blue Ridge Mountain in the Blue Ridge Mountains, where we begin our hunt for the elusive yet pungent skunk ape. Though most encountered in Florida, this possible relative of Bigfoot has been spotted all along the south edge of the United States, including right here in this very county. Here here's hoping we get a glimpse tonight. We'll check back once we're on the trail. Until then, start stay searching. Stellars. I can take that camera off your hands for now. We'll be able to start the tracking scene once the sun sets all the way. In the meantime, she says, we'll get taking all this beautiful scenery. It's gorgeous out here, don't you think? Powerful build. Absolutely. But can we walk faster? Yeah, let's go with that one. Absolutely, but can we walk fast? I'm barely feeling the bur a burn, and this is supposed to be my cardio for days. Ah, I usually would, since I also love to feel my master scream at me, but we don't want to scare off our secretive wildlife, she jokes. But I may just, uh, but maybe you can still get decent workout if it, in it, in it, sorry. But maybe you can get, still get a decent workout in if you tense up your legs every time you take a step. Or you could just get, or you could just get cramp. I guess no one. There's only one way of finding out. Your quiet moment with Stella is broken by a loud, possessive snort. What was that you say? I know to panic. Just the sound of deer makes when they want to warn the rest of the herd about scary predators like us. Check it out. As you and Stella hear the footfalls of animals retreating into the woods, she reaches for a flashlight. That is not normal. A single deer remains behind, staring down the beam of Stella's flashlight while Gretchen winds and pulls at her harness. Yeah, that doesn't look normal at all. And then it's gone. Lovely animation, by the way. Jeez, Gretchen, calm down, you're going to hurt yourself. She cannot handle deer. When she gets like this, I, I usually have to pick her up and hold her. She has a bad habit of slipping her harness when she wants to go to go after something. You're too much of a potato, and they don't make harnesses to fit potatoes, do they? She cuddles um, the pug. There was something wrong with that deer, you say? Oh, that deer, did you see its face? Now that you mention it, there was something a little off. Yeah, like the ginormous like tumours growing on it. <laughs> I'd bet it was um, an abscess, maybe a tumour. That look... It's not like wild animals can get it taken care of. So they can just get bigger and bigger poor things, but there's no much we can do about it. Like, I'm sorry, but if like... 
Mother Nature would have killed that deer off ages ago if it had tumours that size. Like, it couldn't see out of one eye. Like, its entire perception from one side of its face would have gone. Predators would have killed it long ago. But there's not much we can do about it. Uh, what did you, why did you bring Gretchen along? Why did you bring Gretchen out here with you? She doesn't seem like the safest choice for hiking companions, you say. I actually find her to be quite the opposite sort. She wants to chase stuff, but usually like her, when I'm not on my own own cryptid hunts, so I can't hold, ag hold that against her. I'm just happy she's still so feisty, even at her age. Pugs aren't exactly known for good health. But there she is, running around in the woods at 17. And I feel like the fresh mountain air and exercise has helped a lot in that regard. You defy the laws of nature, don't you, Gretchen? Well, you got my heart rate up. I'm ready for the hunt, you say. What we could do that is so they can never too late to turn back, remain silent. Yeah, it's never too late to turn back. No, sir. Let's go to the well you got my heart rate up, it's ready for the hunt. That's got my heart that's got my heart rate up, and I'm ready for the hunt. Same for me. Now we're about we take a quick smack snack break, fuel up, and then we get right into the night's activity. So I've got all the best trail snacks. As you settle down, Chris, Stella breaks open a bag of assorted snacks. Powerful build, take one of everything. Take the trail mix, take the snar, yep. Yeah. Takes dried apricots, sesame snacks, snack bar. Powerful build. Take one of everything. Go up as much as you can. Your body is a temple and your priest demands offerings. Aha, somebody's hungry here. Huh? I'm glad you have such a good time with my food. You look at Stella in response. You're now full of delicious snacks. There would be time for conversations once you're finished, but for now you eat. You never know why we might need the energy to run away, folks. You and Stella sit down on our, on our overlook, snacks in hand as you quiet sound as the quiet sound of evening wildlife or so you. Gretchen gnaws a stick, distracted for a time being. Cute little pug. So tell me, what it's like in Truro? Do you have a house, an apartment, do you live with family, roommates, pets? Tell me what it's like to be Jason. I live alone in a, gin a dingy studio apartment. I live in a closet in a house with ten roommates. I live in the a doorless basement of, which floods whenever it drains. I live in an apartment with difficult roommates. I live in a I live in a 12 by 12 set in someone's yard. I live in an internet calf. Let's go. I live in a I live in a dingy studio apartment. I live alone in a dingy studio apartment. You say And it's a mixed bag. Yeah, so let's go with the middle option. Yeah, and it's a mixed bag. At first it was kind of nice to finally have space. It was just mine, but now it feels cramped. It's like I'm stuck in a closet alone. And no one can come and let me out. Because I chose this for myself, and as far as they know, I'm happy being there. The lights flicker. The toilet is constantly getting backed up because the landlady upstairs keeps fussing her cat's litter. It smells like cigarettes for some reason and it's a home to an extremely durable population of roaches. But I guess it's home. I do what I can to spruce up the place. I, I got a plant, you know, how they say living things are supposed to brighten up the room. When you put it like that, I wonder if staying in that old mansion is a step up or step down for you. Maybe just a step sideways. Have you tried looking for a different place? Maybe uh, finding a roommate? She asks. There's got to be a better apartment than that in the big city like Truro. I've thought about finding roommates. I've had enough bad roommates for a lifetime and it's cheap. Um, let's go with that one. I've had enough bad roommates for a lifetime, I think. I know it's possible to have good roommates. I know people who are great friends with theirs, but it's never worked out for that. Like it worked out like that for me. The loneliest is is at least better than that, you say. Yeah, that's fair. I never really had roommates, so I have no idea what it's like selling a place as an adult. I can see that being tough. So what did you do for a living? I built program um, pragmatic ads. Programmatic ads for a company nobody ever heard of. I sell arts and craft on Etsy. 
first year associate at a big law firm, I'm a streamer, I'm a student, I'm a teacher, I'm in the service industry. Uh, let's see, because like it could be a, it could be a lot of things. Like the service industry can be a lot of things. I'm a student. I'm a teacher. I'm in the let's go with the service industry. I know the service industry in America probably means something else, but you could the, the service industry. I suppose it could be like it, by UK standards, um, sort of like uh, what we call hospitality industry. So sort of like working in bars or hotels or um, restaurants and that kind of stuff. I work in the food in food service. I'm on, on my on my feet all day, getting yelled at for things beyond my control, and I mostly get paid in tips. Uh, it's actually I actually really like it. It's okay. I've been skipping meals to try and save money. Um, I say I hate now. Nah, yeah, probably like as someone who has done stuff like this, it's like it's not fun. I I hate it. I hate it, and I only hope that one day I'll be able to do something different. A crisp breeze passes over you. What about you? What's your living situation, you inquire? Greta and I live in a little house just outside town. It's actually a house I grew up in, so it's a lot of pleasant memories attached to it, and I'm glad I, keep it, I could keep it in the family. My great-great-grandfather built that house, and he must have done a great job, because just as... Just as sturdy as it has ever been. Keen eye. Keeping the house and the family? Is it just you? Yeah, it's just me and Gretchen. Parent died a few years back. But it's okay. I've done my mourning. Life goes on. And we still get to live in our beautiful family home. Just me and Gretchen. It could have been a lot worse. What were they like? You inquire. Did you get along? They were amazing. Two of the nicest people you ever meet, and interesting too. My dad was a bit of a regional regional legend amongst hunster, hunters and trappers. He was out there in the woods on a trail or something, and we certainly had some interesting dinners because of him. He had, le he had to learn how to fend for himself, you see. Since his family didn't have much growing up, so he learnt how to hunt and how to trap and got damned good at it. He always made sure I had food and that I knew how to get it if I ever found myself too far from a grocery store. I could make us a pretty good salad with just what was in the clearing if I had to, though it wouldn't exactly taste great. As for my mum, she was a saint. She was very she was the local vet that lady all animals all farms she was the she was the local vet the lady all the farms in the country in the county knew called the animals were in need of something. She was smart as a whip and strong to boot. Turns out pulling calves out of 1,600 pound cows all day is a great way to build muscle. But she was gentle too. Even the smallest mouse could would get a proper care on her hands. I'm sure she's, mo she's, I'm sure she's most of the reason Gretchen here is one of the oldest dogs I've ever met. So yeah, they were my parents. Um, I guess we're both members of the Dead Moms Club, not to overshare. Um, I can relate, my mum died pretty recently. So I feel lost. I can, let's go, I can, let's try and show some sympathy. I can relate, my dad, my mum died pretty recently. Mm. Mum died pretty really recently, so I get it. It's alright if you have a need to talk about things. Uh, thanks, Jason, that's really sweet of you. How are you holding up? Um, I'm okay. Hanging in there, terrible, to be honest. I was glad to see her go. I don't feel much about it. Um, let's go... Yeah, let's go terrible, to be honest. It wasn't the quick diff. It took years, to the point that it was almost a relief when she finally happened. But then it sank in that she was really gone and I was utterly alone. And then the hospital bills started coming in, so yeah, I'm not taking it well. You know, um, Jason mutters. Yeah, yes, I can't even imagine how bad that must be. It just It's just salt in the wound at that point. Whoa, that's a sound. Stella immediately packs her bag and slings over her shoulder. Stella immediately packs her bag and slings her shoulder. 
keen eye. Everything went. Everything else went quiet. You could hear all sorts of wildlife just a second ago, and now it's all quiet. You declare. You're right. Whatever made that sound is close. Here, hold Gretchen's these for me, and let's check this out. You and Stella inch towards a tree line as she signs her flashlights into the woods. And here, folks, I think is a good place to end for the day on a cliffhanger. Next time, we see what lurks in the darkness around the hollow. I've been Cornus Knight, this has been Scarlet Hollow, and I shall see you all again next time. Enjoy, folks. <laughs>